Welcome back to GES Madras. In this video tutorial, we are going to see how to create an account in USGS Earth Explorer in order to download the satellite data. So as you can see here, this is the official web page for the Earth Explorer from where we can download the satellite images. In order to uh, create and login, we need to first of all open a tab and type in Earth Explorer. Here you can find the option sign in under the Earth Explorer website. This is the official uh, website http.earthexplorer.usgs.gov and click in the option sign in. So as you can see here, this is the sign in page. So if you are having uh, the account, you can just sign in directly here. Otherwise, just come down. Here you can find the option create a new account. Just click on it. And here we need to create our username and passwords. Password. So you can just see here, these are the uh, basic requirements for creation of the username. So it must be between 4 to 30 characters and uh, may, may contain alphabetic and numeric character and uh, you can see it may contain the following special characters. So these are the special characters which are allowed while creating your username. Just see here. These uh, special characters can be used for creating the password, sorry username. So first we are going to create our username. So this is the username where I have used the uh, characters it is uh, more than uh, 30 and it is uh, less than sorry it is more than 4 and it is less than 30 and I am you have used the special character and I have used one numeric character as well. Now we need to create the password so there is a requirement for password as well. You can see here it should be between 12 to 24 characters and must contain at least one alphabetic character and at least one numeric character and may contain the following special characters. As you can see here these are the special characters which can be used for creation of the password. So let me create the password. So I have created the password as well and next we have to confirm that we are not a robot. Just click here and select the option continue. So as you can see here it is saying that uh, we should use at least 12 characters so I have used just 11 characters here. So I need to add another character. So next, next we just uh, select the option continue. And you can see this is the next page where we need to fill up some few information. So the first thing is that in what sector do you work? So you can just click here the drag down option will be available. So right now I am uh, working in an education institution. Likewise you can just select yours. And the next thing is that which of the following characters you as a user of remotely sensed data from USGS. So we are the end users. So I am just uh, selecting the end users. So you can see here this uh, includes uh, scientific research and education. So I am just selecting the end user. I am not a product developer or I am not a manager or I am not a technical user. So please do selecting select accordingly. And the next thing is that you can find 
uh, does your work use remotely sense data from USGS? Of course, we use this data for our research purpose or for uh, educational purpose. The next thing is that of your work that uses remotely sense data from USGS, what percentage is operational and non-operational? So operation is nothing but you uh, certain analysis require a continuous uh, set of data or a continuous monitoring. So for that, if you are continuously monitoring the land use, land cover change uh, or a shoreline change, likewise, you can go for the operational work. Otherwise, we can just stick into the uh, non-operational work. So which is just uh, uh, in a, for just a short time or a short period. So I'm just uh, selecting the operational work percentage, 50 percentage. Or you can just have, you can just uh, increase it or uh, you can just decrease it based on your needs. So I'm just leaving it as it is. So what is the primary application for which you have used the remotely sensed data from USGS in the past year? So if you have used uh, the uh, USGS data in the past, you can just specify it here. So these are the options available, agriculture, uh, alternative energy exploration, likewise a lot of uh, things are available. So I'm going to select the education. And the next thing is that uh, in addition to the primary application, in what other area have you used the remotely, sen remotely sensed data from USGS in past years? So here I'm just selecting the education. I've uh, done the land use land cover change. So these are mine and uh, finally water resource. So if you have uh, something else, you can just specify it in the other uh, application. If you don't find the, uh, the primary application here, you can just specify it in the other applications. Here you can just type in. We just move on to the next thing. Over the next years, approximately how much of remotely sensed data you acquire from USGS will you distribute to others to use as opposed to using it yourself. So here, we are not distributing the data, we are just the end users and uh, I am just selecting none of the data because we are not uh, distributing the data and we don't have the rights for it. So I am selecting none of the data. So finally, there is another option where it asks us the over the next year, how important will free and open access to remotely sensed data from USGS be to connecting your work? So for me, so it is uh, somewhat important. So based on your, uh, you can just select based on your important level, you can just select any of the following. So I'm just selecting somewhat important. And just finally, click the button continue to contact information. Here we need to give our personal information. We need to type the first name, last name, specify the your company or organization. You can also specify the address here. And you can select the country where you are living. Finally, city, state or province which you are living in. Here we need to type in the email ID. And we need to type in once again copy paste and we need to finally provide the alternate email ID and phone number.
and this is not my phone number uh, just uh, for example I'm just putting it so please don't contact me in this number this is not my phone number okay I'm just showing you how to create the account so finally you can just hit the button save the contact information so here I have put a comma I think that is what the problem is so just remove the comma and once again I just go to the option save contact information so you can see here so I have just removed the comma so it is not taking comma and all so please do careful please do be careful with it so I have created the account successfully and you can just check it once everything is okay you can just hit on the button submit registration so here you can see so they have just sent the confirmation message we need to click the link and activate the account and complete the registration process so sometimes if you're not receiving it you can just check it in the spam folder so that is what they have given and you can just see here the confirmation link may expire the link is valid for five days after the creation of new account so we just open the gmail account and we need to confirm the that we have submitted so you can just see here we have got the confirmation mail that is a registration confirmation mail and you can just check in here so this is from USGS and to complete the registration process you must click the link below to confirm and activate your account so just click on this link so you can see here so this is what we have done and we have created the account successfully now just hit the button submit so you can just see here the user successfully confirmed now you can just sign in okay we have successfully signed in now I'm just opening another tab where I have to where I'll be just uh, going to the earth explorer so you can see here I have successfully created the account and we just uh, check it whether we can download the data right now right here so I'm just uh, selecting New York and I'm going to select the data set as so let us wait okay I'm just uh, going with the digital elevation model and selecting SRTM so just uh, for uh, confirming I'm just uh, downloading some data okay you can just see you see here I have got two uh, scenes from New York so this is the digital elevation model data so just I'm going to download it so I need it in GeoTIFF just selecting the option GeoTIFF so once I have clicked in yeah follow pop-ups and you can just see here the downloader has been started so it might be taking a few minutes so few minutes or few seconds based on our internet connection so if you have any doubts in creating the user account you can just ask in the comment section thanks for watching js metras goodbye